Some I'll eat this. I'm not scared. Even though this is 32 years old, 31 years old. <laughs> you can hear that crack in your mouth. Is that good? No, that was not good. It's good because everybody watching now is like, holy crap, why'd he do that? Which one of these knickknacks is oh. your personal favorite? You got one? Or the two items? <laughs> You know, it's funny, I'll tell you one thing, the LJN wrestlers mean a lot, a lot to me because they were core, core childhood toy for me mm-hmm. and when I got hardcore into garage sailing in the mid to late 90s, I could still find them. So that was huge, this is huge to me, actually, actually, like there's, a, I mean, a lot of this stuff really fucking matters to me. This is unbelievable because I literally bought this last year at a garage sale for a dollar at, 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 Noon on a Saturday. Like, I, how how was this Thundercat in package sitting on a table for five hours for a dollar and nobody came across and bought it? I can't, like, to me, that's anytime I've ever bought anything that is really valuable uh, at a garage sale past 10 a.m., I think, like, the, the garage sale gods are just giving me love because everybody's swooping in what at 6 a.m. What is that value to you right now? Uh, it's, a, it's like a hundred. 100 bucks on eBay. Uh, And when I graduated from lemonade stands in 85, 86, 87, the natural move was to baseball cards. I had collected them a little bit. I was a huge baseball fan. I was Mm -hmm. pretty good at Little League in second, third, and fourth grade. Uh, And then 87 Tops came out and it became a complete cultural explosion. Uh, And baseball card clubs popped up in my uh, grammar school, then junior high. And then I went to a baseball card show in Edison, New Jersey uh, uh, on Oak Tree Road uh, at the JCC and it literally changed the course of my life. I was like, what is this? You know, this is amazing and how do I get to be a part of this? And a year later, I did my first ever show. And you're like what, like 14, 15 years old or something? My first show, I was 12. Jeez. I paid like 70 bucks for a table, which felt like a drillion. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's a really special show because it was also the show that I first uh, started seeing, you know, just like my ability to compete with people that were older. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it built enormous confidence in me at a very young age. And the way I merchandised my table, the way that I would spend two hours walking a show and learning all the prices and memorizing them, the way I negotiated, traded, sold, Everything that I still do to this day, those were very early training grounds for me. And when you're a 13, 14 year old, and you've got you know, 40, 50 year old guys, and you, you know, for everybody watching, you have to understand, a lot of people own baseball card stores at this point. Mm-hmm. This was an explosion in late 80s, early 90s. These were mm-hmm. men who were businessmen and ran a you know, million dollar, two million dollar business, and they're trying to rip me off, and realistically, I feel like I ended up on the right side of a lot of trades with those guys. Hey, I'm Mike Oz from Yahoo Sports. This is Gary V. We are gonna open some old baseball cards. All right, Jim Beatty, I remember, mm-hmm. but not a lot. The old Mariners symbol, so, so gangster. So good. Like, by the way, tweet me, Gary V-E-E, if you have an old Mariners symbol tattoo, I'm gonna fly you into New York just to high five you. <laughs> Do that good in there. This is a shitty pack. I don't know if you guys beep you around here. This is an atrocious effort. Let's see, let's I'm see devastated. If I can add to you. The good news is there's not a single card in here. I mean, even McGuire and Bonds is probably less valuable than my Diamond King. I'll eat this. I'm not scared. Even though this is 32 years old, 31 years old. (laughs) You can hear that crack in your mouth. Is that good? No, that was not good. It's good because everybody watching now is like, holy crap, why'd he do that? (laughs) It tastes literally like cardboard. Oh, that's a good one. This is a big deal. So if you follow me for my marketing business, Stories, if you Google my name right now, Gary Vaynerchuk and Ricky Henderson, I put a very long piece out on LinkedIn and Medium called the Ricky Henderson Rule. My first baseball game in 1984, I was poor, I was born in Russia, we didn't have anything and it was like a big deal. Like I think, I, like, I think my mom made me wear a suit. Like, like we were like, this is us like <laughs> making it in America. We go to a baseball game in the Bronx. Ricky Henderson comes off the field and winks at me. I spend the next two decades buying all things Ricky Henderson. I call it the Ricky Henderson rule. It's why I tell people to reply in Instagram and Facebook and like, like say hello. He's so awesome. Awesome. Guys, such a pleasure. Yeah, real pleasure.
I'll tweet at you for uh, salary auctions. <laughs> awesome, okay. right. awesome. Yeah, thank you, it's a pleasure meeting thank you. Thank you, so nice to meet you. Awesome, Brother, man. good job. Appreciate it. You did thank a nice you. job, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. What's up, Gary? Hey, brother. How you doing, man? Looking forward to this. Good to see you, brother. See you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. I love the politician, but I care about the voter. Only. 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 Right. The reason I'm so me is I only care about the end consumer. The end. That's it. That's Whoever's closest to that right. wins. Right. The end. Right. So for 20 years, I've designed campaigns based on what the voters are looking for and what they want. The problem is most of these politicians make assumptions of what they want. They do. They, it's about assumptions. That's right. The ones People, that don't succeed. That's right. They, and they pander. And by the way, 20 years ago, because of the le- media landscape, if I'm running for governor of New Jersey and I'm in a liberal town, my, my messaging may be slightly different than when I'm in a conservative town. You can't get away with that anymore. Right. Everybody's filming everything. That's right. I can't say one thing and then completely a different thing that's an right. hour later, but I would have. Right. If I was a candidate 40 years ago, I would have. Now, not completely different, maybe it's different angles, nuances, so you can say authentic, but it's a very interesting time. We become more polarized because there's nowhere to hide. You know how to overcome that polarization? Uh, in general? Well, from what we found is uh, human contact. Like, sure, our digital programs. I'm I agree, by the way, so I, I gr- by the way, I agree with you. But the I, way that people are willing to be on a computer yes. versus the way you ha- you're going to act with that person in front of them. That's right. Totally different. So what we do is we design campaigns where we actually get people to talk to the people. And what we found was if you take like a voter or a customer that is not being touched and you personally touch them and you know personally communicate with them that, that on the political side it's like a 17 percent increase in voter turnout when you do that yeah and if you got a million votes now you're preaching 17 percent it's insane preaching. and so i'll give you an example yeah you know billy reed the um uh, fashion guy he, he clothing guy down Good. In, uh, here in new york okay my wife loves his clothes love it orders all these clothes <laughs> from him, right? And then she orders all these clothes from him like a month ago and she gets a personal handwritten note yeah, it's from cute. their office. She will now buy the rest of her life. What you got? In the corner, orange book. Yeah, yeah, right. That book that I wrote in 2011, yep. it will always play. Yep. It's scaling unscalability. You know why I would win the American vote? Tell me. Because I would spend every minute literally going to every single person until I couldn't. I know. You're all of them. <laughs> I know. Just all of them. Right. Yeah. One by one. Yeah. And I would be like, look, you're, you know, like, here's, like, tell the truth and be good and, like, get to all of them, you will win. Totally. Hey, brother. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so very, much. very grateful. My pleasure. Thank My you. My pleasure. I'm going to hold on to this. Your you service, dude. Oh, boy. What's up, dude? How are you, sir? Good, good to man. see you, brother. How are you? How are you? I'm well. How are you? Kaz, by the way. Hey, man. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. you. Hey, Gary. Hi, Ryan Parker, 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 Parker. Good to meet you. How, How are you doing? Really Excellent. well. Excellent. Hey, you guys. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Nice to meet you. Such a pleasure. How you been? Good, man. How are you? I'm really well. All good stuff talking about. Yeah, super busy. That's good. I appreciate you taking some time. I know you consume my content. I literally know nothing about anybody. I know nothing about any. I know nothing about what people are doing. Mm-hmm. I have no fucking clue what any of the sharks are doing, what any of my competitions are doing, what anybody that sells business. But if you, I couldn't tell you a single thing, and people I respect, I, couldn't, I, I respect yeah, Seth that, Godin, but I have no clue what Seth Godin's doing right now. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You're finding inspiration and drive and motivation from other sources outside of your industry, outside of your competitive side. Only within myself. That's it. That's it. Motivation and drive is fostered within my own head. What I consume is people. Yeah. The thing that he probably isn't doing yet, all the way, is reading every single comment. All of them. Yeah. Are you? I think, yeah, yeah. Good for you, man. Then yeah. you're, you know what? And I gotta tell you, the first, the negative ones, and now I love it. I'm like, cool, people are watching me. 100%. Be that, keep going. Even better, especially if you're still at that lucky place where you can actually reply to most of them. Yeah. I mean, from 2007. I'm not there the, yet. The reason, the reason I did the Thank You Economy which I wrote in 2011, from 2008 to 2012, I answered every single tweet. All of them. Every email. I used to go to Inbox Zero and go to sleep at two or three o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I had to go to Inbox Zero and then, you know. 
it took over. But one of like the best ones are the ones that, that. It, when, when, that you what, said uh, Instagram was was going to be worth it. Yeah, that was a that everyone. was a different thing. Hey, that was <laughs> the no. The thing I like is the ones that are coming on. You get this guy's a charlatan. He's full of shit yeah. because and we, we have we have bravado. Yeah. So you're going to get that. And honestly, I have empathy. Like if you're somebody, especially LinkedIn. LinkedIn is probably where I get my most hate I can see that. because it's that. professional, yeah. and I'm not delivering that with my content. But I'm doing that because the message is right, the information's right. I understand that I'm not wearing a suit and tie. I understand I'm cursing. I have empathy. I'm very much in this. I have respect. If you're 62 year old Charlie and you grew up a certain way, where the f where fuck is disrespectful. Who am I to judge? I don't care that it's 2018. I don't care that it's cool now. Like, whatever, like, that's your world and I respect that. And I'll jump in and say, hey, brother, I, I, I just, so, I see the comment, like, you know, I get it and like, if you were, I'll say what I just said, if you were brought up in a certain way, I can understand that, but like, if you, if, can we agree that if we get past that, do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Or I'm sorry I bothered you, or things of that nature. I would, inc- I would highly recommend I need engage. To do that more. You should. Yeah. Instead of saying "fuck you," I'll show you. Yeah. You need to say "I hear you," respect, but here's why or how or what, and you'll be stunned. Okay. I would argue that if you did it for the next six months to see what it tastes like, I can think off the top of my head so many of some of the people that have become real advocates of my work behind the scenes. Are people that start off not right. liking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what it is? It's it's respecting. It's not getting too high on your own supply. Yeah. Like I'm always gonna read that shit and respond because I never want to think I'm always right or I'm so great. Like, like all the success is not gonna make me think that I'm not that today's not the day that I have a point of view that's wrong. Mm-hmm. I guess how do you handle in the impact of the emotion when the per when the people that are close to you? Bring that sort of negativity your way. I try to Forget about the strange. Yeah, I get that's it. Just I get finally it. Tweeting. From but my standpoint, I feel bad for them. Yeah, because they're something with themselves. I try to understand. It. Let me give you a good example. How about my dad? My dad, up until probably three years ago, competed directly with me in our own business. Mm-hmm. Like I make a buy, he like makes like like competed. <laughs> you know, and not in a healthy way. But I get it because I'm gonna do that to my kids. Too. Like I'm, I, I get it because he's c- overly competitive. It's also probably the single trait that he gave me that I'm most thankful for, above everything else, above everything else that my dad gave me. And he gave, and you've maybe heard my spiel, of honor, yeah. which really fucking saved me. If I had to give up honor, which is fucking noble as shit, and has made me a much better dude. Mm-hmm. I'd still keep competitiveness because it is the fucking fuel that everything, like I would just not be anywhere in the same universe of who I am without it. Which is why when I, like, it, but it's in me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I don't like, I like when other people win, which is a little bit different. Because my big thing is like, well they deserved it. Like most people hate when people win and they say they get lucky. I see somebody win, as long as they're not a criminal and like stealing, sure. I'm like, yeah. she deserved it. She fucking deserved it. She was either smarter or grind it harder, both. I don't think like I've worked 15 years and this guy came along and fit, got big in two seconds. Well, he was smart enough to really, imp- yeah. you, know how much, you know how many people have consumed my content? A fuckload. You know how many people have gone pot committed? Very few. You know what the ratio of the people that have gone pot committed? All of them have won. Mm-hmm. All of them. Because it's just basic math of attention. Yeah. I create no vulnerability. I'm not guessing if Barrow is gonna be big. And that's what everybody starts doing. They start getting into personality traits and they start guessing. If I could tell you anything, can I tell you what yeah. happened to me from your point where you are now in your career to what, where I'm sitting now? 100%, I got, I got narrower. I get that. I got narrower. I get that. And I know you get it because you feel the pressure that, wait a minute, I've said a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. People are watching. And, and you feel this pull to like, let me, I think this is right, yeah, da, 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 da. I've gotten, I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, people will say, my, cause I read my comments, yo, fuck Gary, like, yeah, this, like to go on my Instagram, yeah, this guy says the same shit every day. And I jump in, I'm like, yep. Yep. Until the end, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's 13 that. things I believe in, like, what do you want from me? I'm not gonna make shit up. 
Wow. But it's all about going more narrow for you now. Yeah, that, that's where this. I see it too. Because every minute you spend not being narrow is a minute you're not spending getting your team to make more content for yeah. the thing. And I think that's what I mean when I, I shouldn't say I'm the best at it. It's what I love best. I love taking someone who's clueless and just walking them through and then the biggest win is I got a job, you did it. Thanks. It's fucking huge too. And you know what's great about what you do? There's a black and white short term ROI. I didn't have a job? Yeah. Now I have a job. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, you know, when you do branding, like the shit that, you know, takes three, four, five years sometimes. So it's a little tricky. Last thing is, yeah. I started, uh, I've, I've been listening to your voice thing. When I started doing what you started saying, hey, remind me to call home in an hour. Same way, and, and now I don't miss a call, it beeps, flashes, you know. So I could see that being, as you keep saying, the next thing. It's going to be the next thing. Cool, man. So, like, literally, like, like now you have to level up. You should build an Alexa skill called how to get a job, you know? And it, yeah. and then when under the, it goes 365 days a year, we'll give you one tip on Alexa. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. You sure can. Oh my what? God, yeah. Sorry, I don't know that one. Not yet, you Alexa. Will soon. <laughs> Not yet, Alexa. Not yet. You will soon. Yeah, of course. Awesome meeting you. It's great. Good pleasure. Good luck. Yeah, have a wonderful Dude, time. Honestly, uh,